Frightful's Mountain, The Icy Get on Wing, Part 2, Page 39 of Chapter 3. Duchess and Lady saw Frightful bring food to Drum and set up such a screaming demand that Frightful picked up the rabbit and carried it above the airy. She dropped it to them. Chup watched her. Frightful saw the food fall onto the blazing star leaves and seed pods, then flew to a tall hemlock at the top of the cliff. Sitting among the lacy needles, the image of the one mountain among thousands, the one tree among millions, and Sam came to mind. She scanned the horizon for her home, then forgot it. Duchess now had her attention. The young falcon was running to the rabbit with outstretched wings. The air flowed over them and under them. And before she could stop herself, she was off the ground and in the air. She flapped and sailed out over the red maples. High above them, she stalled out and fell, landing in a treetop. Her wings spread across leaves and twigs. She hung there for a moment, her shiny legs dangling. One foot found a sturdy limb and then the other. Awkwardly folding her body, wings to her body, Duchess stood upright on the tree limb and shook out her rumpled feathers. When she was comfortable, she looked around. Food, companions, and parents were out of reach. She must fly to survive. Meanwhile, Lady went over to the rabbit and stuffed herself. She napped in the noontime heat, opening her beak to pant and perspire. Upon awakening, she played with a feather, then a stick. Feeling restless, she stretched her wings. The air picked her up, and Lady was flying too. She flapped to the pine tree where the blue jays had nested, landed, and lost her balance. Thrashing her wings, she righted herself on a limb. Spellbound, she began to stare at the silver river. It moved. Out of reeds and willow trees sped a flock of red-winged blackbirds. They flew up and circled around her. Tiny, fearless birds, they screamed and dove. They skimmed by her head. They struck her with their wings. Duchess ducked and dodged and finally decided to leave. Flapping her wings uncertainly, she jumped off the limb and headed for the airy. The blackbirds cried louder and dove at her like pellets of hail. Not far from the cliff face, Duchess lost her lift and fell down through leaves and twigs. She came to rest on a royal fern. It bent under her weight and lowered her into the fern bed. The red-winged blackbirds could not see her and flew back to the reeds along the river. Duchess sat in peace, but also in fear. How could she get airborne again, buried down in the windless and wet fern bed? Drum, who had finally cast his pellet, eyed the rabbit in the airy and set off to walk the short distance for a meal. He flapped his wings to help himself over a bramble bush and was flying. He hit a thermal and went up. Holding his wings firmly outstretched, he spiraled high above the cliff. The air was cold at the top of the thermal and the warm bubble vanished. Drum fell earthward. He hit the ground, spreading his wings and tail to cushion his fall. Drum got to his feet and ran to a bush. From the bush, he flew to a cedar tree, and from the cedar tree to an oak at the edge of the cliff-top woods. He flew, hopped, climbed to its crown, and looked down on the vast valley the river had carved. He saw Frightful on her stub and let out a wild call for food. Chup answered from above. He dove, scattered a flock of ducks, and brought one back to the airy. He dropped it without slowing down, then flew over the cliff, over Frightful, over Drum, over the woods, and out of sight.